Jalen Hurts set the single-season rushing record by a quarterback at Alabama with 891 yards. With 1,255 yards rushing this season, he needs just 35 yards rushing against LSU in the Peach Bowl to set the record for rushing yardage by a quarterback at Oklahoma. Means he'd be the best rushing QB in the history of not one but two Blue Blood programs and the only man who can say that. And we talk about how familiar Jalen is with Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta where the Peach Bowl will be played and where the SEC Championship game is played. But how about this for symmetry? At AT AT&T Stadium, Jalen fumbled his first snap as a collegiate quarterback against 20th ranked USC. Four years later, he won a Big 12 championship in the same stadium. But one fact that gets lost about Jalen, though, is while, yes, he lost his job in the biggest game of his life to a true freshman in what has turned out to be one of the best college football quarterbacks of all time, Tua Tagovailoa, he also usurped former Bama quarterback Blake Barnett in similar fashion. In 2016, Jalen started the season third on the depth chart during the Tide's third drive An Alabama season opener against USC, Nick Saban, put him in over Barnett and Cooper Bateman. But following that game against USC, a 52-6 win, he became so much the starter that Barnett announced he was transferring a month later. Jalen is the first true freshman to accomplish that feat in Tuscaloosa since 1984. He was the first ever Alabama quarterback to start the Iron Bowl for the Tide as a true freshman. To date, he's the only Bama quarterback to throw for at least 300 yards passing and 100 yards rushing in a single game in program history. You'll remember when Tua took Jalen's job. Not only did he not transfer the next year, he didn't take advantage of the new four-game redshirt rule either, and he was there when the Tide needed him to overcome Georgia in the SEC championship game last year. That is one reason he's beloved by Alabama fans and the reason many wanted to see him win the Heisman Trophy this year. The other is he has remained the most selfless quarterback in the sport. Humility is not only a large part of life, but the greatest predictor of success in football. As the saying goes, football is the ultimate team game. But quarterback is the most important and most individualistic position on any football team. And because it is the top spot, the person playing it must, above all else, display the values and traits associated with his team's overall attitude. An arrogant quarterback usually does not last long in a sport where five to seven men are routinely and directly responsible for protecting you and keeping you alive. Hertz is not only a captain and a man bigger, stronger men want to block for, but has achieved the highest form of praise I think you can give any person. His teammates, his family, his brothers, just refuse to let him down. They love him that much. And while most will harp on his losing his job to Tua, let it be known Jalen was the first black starting quarterback to win a national title. At Alabama, and right now I'm going to unpack what that means to the sport, to the university, and to me. Walter Lewis was the first black quarterback at Alabama. He took a visit to see Hertz at Alabama in 2016. At first, Hertz didn't know who Lewis was. Then Director of Player Personnel Kerry Stevenson told him, and Hertz immediately ran up to Lewis and hugged him because he immediately understood the significance. Of Lewis. You have to remember, nothing in the state of Alabama is as cherished as University of Alabama Crimson Tide football. It's more than the state's crown jewel. It is its citizens' identity. And that identity is personified by the head coach and his quarterback. This is also the state where Governor George Wallace literally stood beside state troopers and in the doorway to the University of Alabama Registrar in 1963 in an effort to prevent the university's first black students from enrolling. Their names are Vivian Malone and James Hood. 
It would be another seven years before Paul Bear Bryant brought the first black recruit to Alabama. His name is Wilbur Jackson. Since 1892, only five black men have started at quarterback for Alabama. Walter Lewis, of course, Vince Sutton, Andrew Zow, Blake Sims, and Jalen. It wasn't until 1979 that Tuscaloosa even fielded a black quarterback. His name is Michael Landrum, and Landrum threw just two passes in garbage time in a 66-3 win Alabama had over Vanderbilt as backup. The Tide won the 79 national title, and Landrum transferred the next year. Of course, before Jalen, Blake Sims was the peak of quarterback play at Bama. He led a number one ranked Tide team, and it set the record for total offense by a Tide QB in a season with 3,837 yards of offense. But he never won a national title as a starter. 2014 was his only year as a starter, and his Tide squad, a 2014 semifinal game that they had against Ohio State, yeah, they lost. Jalen eventually did what Blake couldn't, though, and this is why I've been so hard on him. What Jalen did at Alabama, starting a national title game for that university's football team that won it with that history that I'd known since I was a child, I cried for him. I cried for the black Bama quarterbacks who came before him. I cried for us. I have held this fact about myself, the secret, close until now because, well, I know what it means to have the color of your skin be the only characteristic people talk about when they say your name. I know the weight of it. I also know the limits of it. So I criticize his ability as a passer, which is fair. I criticize his seeming inability to enjoy all that he's accomplished as an individual and for emulating the most successful and best head coach in the history of my favorite sport. Because I understand how my commentary can be received and most people only want to talk about the football on the field and not the race of the players who bring us such joy. But here now, on the night he will be one of a selected few, celebrated as one of the four best college football players in America. I am overjoyed for Jalen. In a country where just 6% of more than 300 million are black and male, in a sport where more than half of the 11,000 plus men in football subdivision football are black, I can't tell you how beautiful it is for me to know it's him who has ascended. It's him whose legacy will inspire books and documentaries and films. It's him who has brought us closer together. You are special, Jalen. You are prophecy fulfilled. Deuces.